Hi, we're Gary and Linda with Blazing New Trails. And as you can see, maybe not, <laughs> we've got a beautiful backdrop here. We're just outside of the Red Rock of Sedona. And we wanted to shoot this video because we had a situation that happened several- Multiple situations. <laughs> so we've been on the road since about 2020. Some, some of that was part-time. We've retired as of a year and a half, almost coming up on two years. Yeah, yay! <laughs> and we've gotten a little bit bigger taste of the RV life. So if you're familiar with David Letterman's top 10 list. Ladies and gentlemen, here's tonight's top 10 list. We're gonna do what we feel is our top 10 list of RV realities. Well, what's the little line that you said before? You don't know what you don't know until you know. Until you know. <laughs> you, you just kind of find your way through this thing of RV life. But sometimes until you make that mistake, it really doesn't hit home. Yes. <laughs> and then you try not to ever make that mistake again. You try to learn from that mistake. So, number starting with 10. number 10. Running out of propane. Oh my gosh. In the middle of the night. Gary, I don't think that we have propane. I think it's out. You gotta be kidding me. It's the middle of the night. So it always happens. Again. Again. I'll go check on it. Thank you. Always. Always just, in the middle of the night. For some reason, it always seems to happen that way. <laughs> and of course, I'm the one that gets cold first. So I wake up. And I check the thermostat, you know, we're out of propane. And we do have gauges, and I, I try to be pretty regular on checking those gauges, but then get off Life onto something else, and I forget to check, and next thing you know, it's <laughs> Linda's cold. two or three in the morning, and yeah, Linda's cold. Yeah. Number nine, arriving late Oof. to your campground. Yeah. <laughs> Because that happened the very first time on our very first trip. And we'd, of RVing, yes. Of RVing. And we'd done pretty well up until this last instance. And we yeah. left. A couple years. We did fine. Yeah. We'd been boondocking in Quartzsite. We got away just a little bit later than what we wanted to. It was a five hour trip. Made a couple stops along the way. And bam, it's seven o'clock. <laughs> We're rolling into our campsite. It's dark. Um, it was a stark reminder of just how difficult that is and what others say about never arrive at your campsite after, after dark. dark. We were fortunate though because our setup, All right. I got backed in pretty quick and our setup went pretty quick. Yeah. So The one nice I, thing I, I think if up. you do have that happen to you by chance, only hook up what you absolutely have to. That's you know, good point. turn on your water, get your electric on, sort can wait till the next day. You know, get your slides out. Just, just have bare minimum that night, and it'll take some of that stress off of you. Yeah, really good point. Every now and then, it's going to happen where you do arrive at your campsite late, but don't freak out. Take a deep breath, and just uh, don't let that rush you through your setup procedures, and and just take your time. <sighs> Never We're not going to do that again. No. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Number eight. Tight spaces. Tight spaces. <laughs> I'm so glad I love you so much. <laughs> Make sure you love your partner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and can get along with them. Yes. Because in 300 square feet, you have to get along. There's nowhere to go to hide. The bathroom is way too small. Very small. <laughs> Between your living room combined kitchen yeah dining room dining room the bathroom and the bedroom at home we're used to 1600 yeah. square feet yeah without the basement the full basement yeah. finished yes <laughs> so you will almost be on top of each other absolutely yeah there's nowhere to hide <laughs> so rvs are great but make sure you yeah, you have to get along. get along. You have to be friends. You know, I, it's one thing to love each other, but you have to be friends and get along and 
be comfortable with being in such a small space together. You do. Yeah. And we've been doing this since 2020. And, yeah, I mean, we've had our little space. All the time. <laughs> I wouldn't say not all the not time. Not all the time. <laughs> but occasionally. Yeah. Work through it and move on. Right. Number seven. Navy showers. Ah. <laughs> okay, speaking of boondocking, that we just came from boondocking. And, and we really hadn't had a whole lot of experience with boondocking. No, none. On an, ex <laughs> on an extended period of time. Right, I mean, we'd done Cracker Barrel <laughs> overnight. <laughs> but four days for us was a little bit more than what we're used to. <laughs> yeah, it was a learning experience, that's for sure. But one of the things that comes with boondocking is conservation of water and Navy showers. Navy showers! <laughs> Maybe not everybody's favorite, but it just goes with the territory. Right. It helps you save water if you can, when you shower, you turn on the water long enough to get wet, turn it off. In case you don't know what a Navy shower is, soap up, turn on the water, rinse off, and you're done. Number six. Are you, do you feel like you're comfortable doing projects with your RV, doing repairs and whatnot? Are you a handyman? Are you a handyman? Now with myself, <laughs> I just know enough sometimes to be dangerous. <laughs> now I have done some projects mm -hmm. around the camper, yeah. which we've talked about, but there's some that get a lot more technical and I'm, sometimes I'm afraid to get into the technical projects. It does help because there's a lot of you YouTubers out there that love that kind of stuff, and you'll outline it step by step, which is great. But for me, sometimes it's just a little too much because I'm afraid I'm gonna do something to screw it up. I'll never forget when we first started this, and I would say, well, Gary, we have Project ABC. You know, it's this this just happened, it's broken. <laughs> just sit there like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> but he's learned and we have found places online where we can get more information and Facebook groups really help a lot. Yeah. Something else that we learned from um, the Grand Design text is that Lippert has a line, I believe it's a phone line, I believe it's 432 uh, Lippert. If that's not right, we'll put it down here at the bottom. But you can call them and they have people text there that will walk you through every step and they will not get off the phone with you until you have solved your problem, fixed whatever's broken. Yeah. So if you have a Lippert issue, they're the ones to call. But you'll get you'll get better at it as you go. You, you will, it, it's a comfort thing. And just know going into it, what is your comfort level? And if there are things that you don't feel comfortable doing, find somebody that will do it for you. And make sure you bring tools, all the right tools. Number five. Yeah, and so I think while we're talking about doing things that are uncomfortable with regard to repairs, one thing that you don't know when it's gonna happen, but at some point, if you do this long enough, it's going to happen, and that's a flat tire. Now with us, it was probably two, two and a half years before we had our first flat tire. Yeah. It's a trick to get it back in place. I don't expect to be doing this on Christmas Eve. And I'll never forget when it, the first one happened, our TP, TPMS system just started going off. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't have a TPMS system, make sure you have one because that's going to save you from further damage down the road. And it'll get, you know, it, it starts going off, the beep starts, and you hopefully have enough time to get off the road then, you know right. I mean? Because as soon as it starts, it's going to let you know it's better than having a tire blow, and now you have to try to get off the road. And obviously it gets worse depending on what street you're on, and maybe you're on an interstate. Uh, the weather might be bad. You just never know. You just never know. And and the other thing that we carry as well, haven't really had to use them because we've been able to pull off and take care of it, but we also have safety vests. We have uh, LED 
lights flashers, that we can, yeah. flashers that we can put out on the road, safety glasses. So just make sure you have all of that equipment and you're prepared for whenever that time comes. Hopefully you never have to use it, but it's one of those things that's better to have it. And the one other thing I'll say too that's helped me after that first instance, finding and assembling all of the tools took me a little bit of time. So what I've done is I've, I've taken a piece of, I've taken duct tape and I've labeled and wrapped a piece of duct tape around my sockets, around all the equipment, everything that I need to change that tire. And that second time around, man, I got to it really quick and it, it worked out really well. Yeah. Number four, one of our favorites. One of our favorites. I, I think on this one too, we've done a much, much better job. And we talked about it in our 12 days of Christmas video where we where we talked about things that we learned in our first year we're the type that and probably like you we like to save a buck where we can yeah and one of the biggest expenses obviously is diesel or gas and we were going through Topeka and we found ourselves in a really 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 tight space because with me you know I I I really I love a challenge <laughs> No. <laughs> and we love saving money and this offered both and uh, we almost didn't get out of there <laughs> it was a really small parking lot it was like a mom-and-pop store yes and we had gone out of our way to get there um, we turn the corner we come up to it and there was hardly any row any room between the gas pumps and the street yeah. and then between mm -hmm. the gas pumps and the store itself yeah we got in. It was easy getting in. We got, <laughs> barely got out. Yeah. We were afraid so, it was going to be one of those that you see the videos where somebody takes off the top of their of their camper, you know, they leave it behind. <laughs> so we had to nudge, you know, it was like a, a 10 point turn just trying to get moved. Had to wait for people to move their cars so that we could get out. It was not good. So. A lot of times, if you're like, we use iExit, um, I look on there for a gas station. If it's something that looks like a regular gas station and not a truck stop, I always go and onto Google Maps and I go down to Street View and I look at it first to see if it looks like something we might be able to get in or out. Because a lot of times the roofs are also, sometimes they're really low. You gotta watch that. Yeah, so you have to make sure that you have enough room to get your camper under there. Yeah, so know where you're going in advance. And I've said this in the, that particular video, always have an exit plan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's easy to get in and not to get out. <laughs> yeah, yep. You can do number three. Yeah, let's talk about unexpected accidents to your rig. <laughs> Accidents are always unexpected, and right? You know what? We were just talking about gas stations. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's why, to, <laughs> and to our rig, that's where it happened. We, we got in fine, but um, it's that what, ha what happened with us was that trailer swing. And it was something that I was just not really prepared for, didn't really know anything about. And we clipped the driver's side tail end of our camper and I'll tell you I think both of us just about jumped out of our <laughs> seat when it happened yeah that's so, not fun fortunately it wasn't the damage wasn't significant we've seen worse to other people but um, just be ready because sometimes it's going to happen whether you're ready for it or not case in point is happily ever Hanks they had a tree fall on the roof of their camper. Talk about devastating. It was about $25,000 in damage. Mm -hmm. So just, I think, be aware of your surroundings as much as you can and have a good insurance policy. <laughs> have your insurance guy on speed dial. Yeah. Oh, and then, oh, even better than that. We had an incident in South Dakota where we were pulling onto a highway and then we realized at the very last second that there was no merge lane to get on the highway. So when you turned, you were turning onto the highway just like a street. And we had an 18-wheeler clip us 
the front of our truck. That was unexpected too. It didn't look pretty, but you know, it happened and we just put in the claim right away and waited until we got back. Fortunate thing is, it. he didn't take the front axle with him. Right. <laughs> that would have been the worst of yeah. all of It was mostly just body. Yeah. Body it was damage. All body. Yeah. So, you just never know. And you do, things happen. Things do happen. Yep. And these last two topics. Number two. Are going to be really kind of related to safety, I think, to some degree. Absolutely. But as drivers, even if we're not behind the wheel pulling our RV or driving our Class A, Class C, whatever, we're still dealing with crazy drivers. I mean, it, it's really, really bad out there. The cell phone has even made it worse. People are just unforgiving. They're careless. They don't care. And they're not thinking they're, that, you know, just like with semis, that we can't stop on a dime. Exactly. So you have to be defensive, for and they, sure. they don't want to be behind you. Right. <laughs> so they're zooming in and out of traffic. Yeah. And it even gets worse when you get into heavier populated cities. Oh uh, my gosh. Yeah, we hate going through cities. Bad weather. You know, it's just, anything can really happen. So this is a topic that, you know, it's, it's not something that's any secret, but just be aware of what's going on out there. Protect your investment, yourselves. <laughs> Be safe and and just always expect that they're going to cut you off and that they just don't really care. Defense, defense, defense. Okay, number one, Gary's on. Last but not least, and again, talking about safety, make sure your truck is capable of towing your rig. There's nothing worse than maybe being on one of these mountain passes going up or going down and maybe not having the power to pull your camper up the mountain pass or going down the steep hill and having the camper pushing you <laughs> and grinding your way down that mountain right well it's and, and if you have the proper truck then you're going to get better gas mileage too yeah and, and how do you know if it's the proper truck there's a sticker on your driver's side of your door and it tells you the specs and then your camper. And again, I'm not telling you maybe anything that some of you don't know, but safety is so critical and especially when it comes to towing your camper, there can't be anything more important than making sure you have the right amount of truck or even maybe a little bit more than what you need because there's times when you're going to need it. Yeah, don't be always believe your salesperson when you buy a camper yeah. and you say, well, I have an F-150 or I have an SUV. Can I carry that? Can I pull that camper? Sure, <laughs> they're gonna tell you. They just wanna make a sale. I mean, not all of them. I'm sure our salesperson, <laughs> he'd never do that. He'd never do that. <laughs> safety, safety, safety. Yeah. Okay, that's our top 10. Is there something maybe that we might have forgotten? Something that obviously wasn't in our list that you think maybe is more important? Let us know in the comments section. We'd love to hear your feedback. Until then, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. Maybe consider following our journey. And for those of you that have been following our journey, we've got an important announcement coming up and it's probably with us it blew us away, and it's probably going to be a huge surprise to you. So we look forward to seeing you on the trails, and until then, bye for now.